In this episode, we get close to finishing our oil platform and placed almost 50 fully overclocked fuel generators, set up the last pipelines, conveyor belts and power lines for this place, start everything up for the first time and much more. Yo, hello everybody, welcome back to Prone to Play, a let's play series of Satisfactory. In the last episode we set up these packages as well as the refineries that you see on the screen right here. And the scope for today is to actually finally set down the fuel generators. In order to be able to do so, I extended the foundation here in between episodes. The second floor is now still 31 foundations long, but it's now 24 foundations wide. With the only exception being these last two tiles, because I, or this last power actually, because I had to extend them for the packages. But other than that, this is just, yeah, always 24 tiles wide. And now we really have enough space to set up all the necessary fuel generators that will provide us with a huge amount of power in the future. And I really hope that it's not taking too much anymore. But before we start, just one simple thing. I actually set up the empty canister loop for our production because I didn't want to bother you with any more logistics setup. And let me give you the tour really quick. So you already knew that the empty canisters come out of these fuel... No, excuse me. Here do we start. Um, the empty canisters are necessary in order to package water. And we have three different cycles running all the way to these refineries where the packaged water gets converted into packaged fuel and then getting transported up here. Again, three different cycles. I actually deleted this ladder because of the extension of the foundation, so let me just go around the corner really quick. And we already prepared the logistics up here in the last episode. So these lifts get the packaged fuel up behind these packages and then split them up evenly. One goes here, then eight packages are on one line over here and the last eight on a separate one as well. Here the packaged fuel gets unpackaged and the fuel will be transported later either to these turbo fuel refineries or into the fuel generators directly. And the other output is the, or are the empty canisters. And this is now finished because the setup is basically the same as the input. We have eight packages getting merged over here. Eight times 60 more empty canisters getting merged from these eight packages over here. And then the last one is again on its own. And it gets fed through a floor hole. And then the logistic is attached to the ceiling, so it's as short as possible. And this one is in fact now <laughs> an almost one by one loop on its own. It's completely separated um, together with this one refinery. So everything is Mark 1 here and the empty canisters get fed back in directly here. And for the other 8 times 60 canisters, these are getting split up evenly again into these 8 packages and the last 8 respectively. I'm still thinking about maybe adding a storage container buffer where Empty canisters can back up if they are not necessary, but since this will be a steady running manifold system, I will simply feed in empty canisters everywhere manually at the start, so there won't shouldn't be any issues with backlog or 
um, too few empty canisters and even if there will be issues in the future we can still add a buffer in the future later but for now this is not um, in the scope and this is actually the only maintenance that I did in between episodes because I really want to keep this going and I really want to finally set up the fuel generators. We waited long enough with this and we prepared so much already that I really really want to have this oil plant going. Oh yeah, I remember. One last little detail. I was in the, at the oil extractors in the cave and you will see um, in the b-roll in a minute that creatures attack each other in this game. I had no idea and I saw this for the very first time, but I, I never knew. And in case you didn't either, now you know. <laughs> I don't know if this is only in retaliate mode and they attack you all together when they are aggressive, but yeah, I found this funny and I wanted to share this with you really quick. Okay, enough delay from my side. Now we have enough room for 49 fuel generators up here and these two are already in place because these will simply be fed by this one little tiny single packager and the other ones do have their own pipeline network because this one is already prepared for the turbo fuel refinery um, this is 360 meters cubed of fuel and we will feed this into fuel generators directly at the start but once we can add compacted coal to this place this will be um, get fed into these refineries at first and then convert get converted into turbo fuel and then get um, stored into the fuel generators and these one are exactly 600 fuel meters cubed per minute so this is the um, maximum capacity for Mark II pipeline network, but this sh should work fine. I've heard that there were issues in the past with getting or using Mark II pipelines to its full extension, but I haven't had any problems in this game with this up until now, so I guess it should be fine. And it's getting nighttime again. I'm actually gonna wait until it's um, a little brighter again, until dawn comes and then we will finally set up the fuel generators.
49 fuel generators finally in place. This looks awesome. And allow me to explain, because you saw me struggling a little bit there in the time lapse and with placing the refineries, ah, with the fuel generators, excuse me. But the original idea was already born and just badly executed <laughs> because the turbo fuel eventually we will for the for the start just feed in normal fuel into the generators but this layout is all way, uh, already the definitive version because these refineries will produce 300 turbo fuel which feed 26.6666 fuel generators and I wanted to have these in a separate block so that it's really easy to have a designated pipeline network for them and to have a second one for the normal fuel. So we have seven fuel generators, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in this line, seven here, seven here, which is 28, uh, 21, and then one, two, three, four, five, six in this line. So these two blocks create one department, let's say, of 27 fuel generators, which will get turbo fuel in the future. And then the second block is simply 6, 12, 18 fuel generators directly next to each other. And then this is the only thing that I changed my mind at. Um, originally this was only two fuel generators separated but because of the layout and I actually started way um, further away from the refineries that I intended to which is why I had to extend the foundation here for the seventh fuel generator in each line. So this one was not fitting anymore. Originally I wanted to do seven fuel generators per line everywhere but I just thought that this also might look nice and reconnected the pipeline network so that we don't have the maximum capacity of 600 meters cubed of fuel here in this network but only 570 and now we have 120 normal fuel leading into these four generators instead of 50% respectively. So this is the idea. And I still have to do the pipelines, I still have to do the power lines, because this was not blueprinted. I figured that this was not necessary because there's no recipe to uh, in insert or choose from. And also only one junction per two fuel generators because they are directly um, facing each other. But yeah, might have helped to have at least one junction and the power lines already prepared via a blueprint but now it's too late and i have to do this in a cut so that you don't have to watch me setting this up for three more hours so let me take care of all of this and then i come back to you good morning sun is rising again and it took me actually to or more than two real-time hours to get the final stuff going, the pipeline networks, the power lines and so on and so forth. We will take a look at this in just a minute. But first, let us take off the fuel generators from the to-do list as well as the empty canister loop. And now basically the last thing to do is to get the fuel generators up and running. And in order to do that, I don't want to mess with a jump start and getting the machines active one by one. So this is why we are actually going to cut off the whole factory system in the desert. Aside from the awesome things, the train stations, because we do need to have the power transported um, to the blue crater in order to use it obviously, but the awesome things will stay. We will use the hyper cannon in a minute 
everything else will lose its power for just a second. Might be more, 10 minutes or so. Oh. This was not how I intended it to be. We lost 150 megawatts. Oh yeah, we lost the <laughs> we lost the coal generators. But the original two that are still at the oasis, but the main power network is still up and running. And we have a consumption of 800. Wow, what is consuming? Okay, but it should still be enough. I don't know. We have two train stations with 100. We have four awesome things right now. And we have the miners. I have no idea. But let's see how far we can go with our current power. Oh yeah, the hypertube itself. I don't know. Should be fine though. And I will clean up after this episode. Also, the train tracks still have to be cleaned, but for now I just want to have the fuel generators up and running and this is all I care about. So let's get this going. Now you can see here all the color coding and so on, but I think it's probably best. Don't judge me for that one by the way. I just wanted to have the power poles for now. And there's a power switch for the upper level and one for the lower level as well. And without further delay, let's simply start up the lower level so that the oil extractors are coming to life. Everything here will start running and we actually have to put in the uh, empty canisters by hand. But let's just keep this going. So the oil extractors start and so on. And we will have more power at last. Obviously it will take some time until all the oil reaches the main destination and until that it might come to a little bit of um, backslash from the fluids but all in all the first step should be that the extracted oil reaches these refineries And this will actually take a while until these run constantly. But before I connect the fuel generators, which I have not yet, I want to have the pipelines completely backed up because I want to avoid as much stuttering as possible. So I will give the other machines, the refineries, the packages and so on some time in order to be able to back up. Now let's take some of the empty canisters and make sure that water gets packaged. And I actually might have to do this multiple times. so that the empty canister loop will running constantly as well because I don't want to 
have the packages down here, wait for the packages up above to unpackage the fuel again. So if there are blanks or gaps in the process, this might lead to stuttering in general. Okay. And here we have the empty, no, the packaged water running already. Wow. <laughs> this looks cool. I've never packaged water in this game actually up until this point. And there we have packaged fuel going up already as well. So let's head upstairs. Oh yeah, and the plastic and the rubber, let me show you in a minute. Once we are up above again, I can show you. Plastic and rubber is for now getting backed up into these storage containers, but since they will be full in the blink of an eye, the overflow will get synced so that nothing has a backlog in this setup whatsoever. And here we have an issue. But what is the issue? No power. Oh yeah, <laughs> of course. Because I wanted to give the setup a little bit of backlog and time to prepare, I set up a separated power switch for the second level. So let me just fill up the empty canisters one, uh, once again. And once I've done this, I will meet you up there because you don't have to watch me do this a second time. Okay, and now that this is up and running, let's actually talk about the second level. Because the idea is that the packaged fuel will reach these packages, gets unpackaged, and then on this side these two packages will feed these four fuel generators with normal fuel. Then the next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is that correct? Two plus six is eight. Yes. The next nine packages will provide fuel to these 18 fuel generators. Everything color coded nicely and the power output is actually at the back of each fuel generators so since these are since these have their backsides against each other this was very clean and easy to have two separate power lines available or uh, to set it up. And I actually opted to have a power switch for each single line of fuel generators. I don't know if I will need it in the future, but I just thought this would look nice, so I did it anyways. And the last three packages will provide fuel to eventually these 16 refineries, which will convert it into power fuel, or turbo fuel, excuse me. But for now, this one is simply getting extended here around the corner, feeding into the pipeline directly instead of the turbo fuel being an output. And this one is cut off completely at the moment because the normal fuel is not sufficient to provide these, this whole segment with, um, with power. Instead, the fuel gets transported around here into these two lines with the only exception being the last one because this is these are 13 fuel generators and 360 fuel is only enough for 12 being completely overclocked by the way it took so much time to put all these power shots in and i color coded this one yellow so that i do not oversee it in the future once we get turbo fuel to this place because this one is not connected so it's only these 12 and I think this last one is not completely overclocked, but instead has a clock speed of 166.6667%, 6, 
which is the maximum that we can achieve with this setup. But other than that, these 12, these 12, the other 6 and these 4 fuel generators will run completely. And since the package fuel is completely stacked now, let's see if our network can afford this still. Consumption is at 2100. Ah, let's do it anyways. We have 20 batteries completely charged up. And I think we will be fine. And here we have the empty canisters already running back. Oops, auto save. And the fuel running through the pipelines. And as soon as this is completely backed up, I will hook up the first fuel generators. Because I have not connected them yet. Because as far as I know, uh, as soon as you hook up a fuel generator or any generator to a power source, it will automatically start to run. And I actively want to have these power lines backed up a little bit. Yeah, the, the pipelines, excuse me. So this is why we have to connect the given pi uh, fuel generators manually now. Otherwise they would have already started and no backlog would have been possible. And these seem to already have started. <laughs> but why? Oh, I already hooked them up. Well, so much for this. Alright, whatever. It seems like this is working just fine. Let's take a look over here. Nothing has reached so far. Why though? Is it coming that slowly? Huh. Seems like it, but now it should be working. Okay, these are already idle. Are these full? No. What's the matter? Full of empty canisters. Have I not hooked up the... Backlog? Yes, I did. Oh, then I sh actually might not, might have not connected the mergers to the packages themselves. That might be the problem. Let me check. No. Oh yeah. It doesn't matter how much time you take into a project or take for a project, there's always issues. <laughs> well, doesn't matter. Still looking good. Okay, this one's completely full. So it should be safe to start up the first fuel generators. Yes, they're starting up directly, even though this power switch is off. So let's flip the first two and connect everything.
Uh, these are actually still stuttering. Okay, this might take a minute. But finally, it's backing up, so I think... Wow. Production already way over 10,000, 11,000 megawatts. Tripled with just a few power switches and some days of work. <laughs> okay, so since this is not backed up as well, I will wait just a minute with this line and these two are not provided with fuel at the moment. Anyways. But here... This is the final goal that we worked towards for quite some episodes now. And I'm happy <laughs> that it seems to work out very fine, actually. Aside from these Mark 1 conveyor belts that were missing, everything else is running quite smoothly up until now. Let's check the lights. Yeah, oil is full. Refineries are still stuttering a little bit. But this is backed up completely. Okay, the heavy oil residue is not getting away. So this is backing up a little bit. So let's check. Maybe I spoke too soon. These are almost running at full capacity. I can imagine that yeah, packaged water is still missing a little bit. So we might have to insert even more empty canisters. This one, why is this one idle? Yeah, empty canisters missing. But here it's obvious because the loop is not fast enough. Um. percent ninety eight yeah some of the packages at the corners are not having enough empty canisters so let's do this for now and I will grab some of some more of these because I produced four thousand beforehand. Um, but I also have to be careful that I don't have too many. But could this be an issue? I don't know. Let me go to the storage container really quick once again, beat in some more empty canisters and then I come back to you. Okay, I added the remaining empty canisters that we had still on stock to the loop. and. Also hooked up the last line of fuel generators. And it's actually already running very smoothly. A constant production of 59,700... No, excuse me. 15,975 megawatts. This is so crazy. <laughs> nice. And it was all 
for this. You can see the packages running or the packaged fuel running. And the packages actually are very... And the animation is cool. Okay, I'm so happy that this is up and running. Because this means that we could tackle the progression in the game finally because we have the power now for that for example to deal with bauxite and aluminum and to discover what's necessary in order to complete the next milestones and progress further in the game but before we do that I actually want to upgrade this place already to version 2 and set up the compacted coal assembly in the desert and figure out how we can transport this to this place with the train station. So let me check. Alright. Production system is back on power as well. As you can see here, all the parts are slowly floating back in. Took some time, but I cut the power off. After all, so there's no no surprise in that. But now everything is running smoothly again and the power output is currently stable as well. So I hope that that stays <laughs> the way it is. And just to show you, this is our current place where we initially created some nobelisks for us and black powder is still setting up, although completely backed up, I thought that there's no point in creating thousands of nobelisks or a black powder and stuff, so I didn't implement any awesome sink or something or transportation to the central storage even. But we have to clear this out before starting our assembly for the compacted coal, which will then eventually get transported to our oil processing plant in the blue crater. And I'm not sure yet if I will connect the train line over here, build a little turn and have an additional station here that picks up the compacted coal, or if I will simply drag a conveyor belt to the central storage and hook it up there directly, so that I don't have to mess with train logistics. But I think I will opt for the additional train line because it will just look cooler than a simple conveyor belt. And we have the power for the stations anyways, so yeah. What's, what's the big deal? But we are not going to do this today. And actually I have to hurry because I have to do something where nobody is allowed to see me. And it's getting bright again. Daytime is coming, so I was thinking a little bit. And I still haven't figured a way of how to get rid of the uranium waste from Inel, since he's still suffering. And even though he's seeming to yeah, pack a punch regarding the radiation, even if we come too close to him, the radiation level is showing and we take damage. So I can't imagine how this guy is feeling. So I decided to free him of his suffering and in order to do that I actually have to lead him to the edge of the map. Come here little guy. Soon you will be free. And I prepared a little something over there. So just bear with me for one minute. It won't take too long, I promise. I want to do this quick. OK, 
Come here, come here, it's time for a walk. Right to the edge, right to the edge. And here we are. Okay, I don't want to show you yet, <laughs> but let's do this quick and dirty. Three, two, one, go. Oh, this was actually <laughs> easier than I thought. I thought this would kill me in an instant. Because I once picked up pure uranium and my power or my health went from 100 to 0 like nothing. Now to everyone who thought I would lead him off the edge and let him die in the open space, you are either a bad person or you watch too much Let's Game It Out. I did see him launching all the lizard doggos with the uranium waste in his videos. This guy is the most amazing player ever, I really enjoy his videos, but I could not bear to let this guy go. Um, okay, but yeah, I wanted to really take care of this so that we can see what else he can bring us now in the future. And this will just stay there until further notice. We will be able to take care of uranium waste eventually in the future, but not now. So yeah, this will stay over there. And just in case if he decides to bring us additional uranium waste and he hasn't learned his lesson yet, we can simply add it to the storage box. But I think this is going to be it for today. But this episode was very successful in my opinion. We finally got the... Let's go over there while we're talking. Um, we finally got the oil processing platform up and running. And I'm really happy and excited about what we can do next. Because now we, with that much power we have so, much, so many possibilities. We have now I think more than 10,000 megawatts to spare. Yeah, the maximum consumption is around 6,000. And we have more than 10,000 still available for us. So, the possibilities are endless at the moment. Now, even though we want to improve this even further with setting up the compacted coal and adding it to the line in the next episode, I don't think this will take too long. And then we finally, finally will have the scope and the capacity to consider doing something else. For example, dealing with bauxite and getting our hands on aluminum. This is definitely the next task, but if you want to see something else, let me know. And I also want to say really, really big thank you again for interacting with me now um, even more. I am getting lots of comments recently and lots of positive feedback, some tips, questions, and uh, insights in what you are going to do or are currently doing or have done in the past even. It's amazing to share experiences with you, getting some ideas, some tips, some advices from you, because yeah, I have still so much to learn about this game. And please keep doing this. I'm, I'm really enjoying it and thank you very much for the feedback and for the kind words. So this is going to be it for today. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing. And thank you very much again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next one.